Hello and welcome to this video. After saving months and months, I was able to get the MacBook Air M1 edition and I'm going to share my experience. If you think about getting this device, I hope this is a helpful guide for you and you can make decision based on this video. Of course, you can do further research to come up with your final decision. First, I needed to set up Flutter in this device. So I downloaded the SDK and copied the SDK to my user folder because when you download the SDK, it is a zip file and then you unzip it and you can put it in a folder. So I put the Flutter folder in the user folder next to download and desktop and applications. So it is easier to reach. And then I installed Android Studio and I did a little research about what version of Android Studio is good for M1 chip. And I discovered that some versions, they do not run emulators and they do not support it. But recently, this Android Studio version, which is Arctic Fox 2020-3.1, this one has the emulator and it supports it. So when I go to the device manager and run the emulator, the emulator runs and it is quite fast. And if I want to run this application, which is the default Flutter application, I can just click the play button and wait for it to run. And as you can see, it, it runs on the emulator without any problem. I still haven't tried more complex applications, but this is the first thing that runs the default Flutter application. And one good thing about Mac and Mac OS is that you have access to iOS simulator and you can test and run your application on both Android and iOS Android is emulator, but the iOS is simulator. Emulator is more realistic than simulator. So in Mac, you have to first set up and download the Xcode. Xcode is an IDE for coding inside the Mac OS. And when you download the Xcode, you have to run some commands to set it up. You can find it in the flutter.dev website. And after that, you will have access to the iOS simulator. And if I want to run the Flutter application on iOS, I just select the device and click on the play button. And it runs the Xcode build first, just like the Gradle on the Android. And then when it is done, it runs the application on the simulator. And this is very interesting. And the power of Flutter, you can have iOS simulator and Android emulator running the same application. And inside the code, you didn't change or you didn't do any platform specific programming just with base code you can have the application run on iOS and on Android and also on the web if you want to run it on the web you can select the Chrome and you run it on the web that's the power of Flutter and it's going to get better and better over time just one more thing is that at this moment that I have iOS simulator running and Android emulator together and Android Studio, I have over 11 gigabytes of RAM occupied and I have 4.4 gigabyte free RAM. So if you want to get the MacBook, you need to get 16 gigabyte of RAM because 8 gigabyte is going to be challenging. And one more thing about macOS is that you have to set up your keyword commands in a file called zip 
shrc and by default this file is not created and you have to create this file and in order to be able to say flutter and this flutter command is recognized inside the terminal you need to set up this file and inside this file you have to mention the path to the flutter folder and bin folder and you have to also mention the path to your Java and this is needed for your Android Studio to work because I thought that the Android Studio would install the Java or Java is available by default but when I tried to run the application I got Gradle error saying that Java is not available on this device so I installed Java and JDK version 11 and that's another thing Java version 16 has some issues and I ran into problems using Java version 16 so I did some research and I installed Java version 11 and then I added this line to the zshrc file and then the Java is recognized inside the Android Studio and after that I was able to run the application and compile it for Android emulator and iOS simulator so overall it wasn't a smooth experience in terms of flutter programming in M1 chip of course if you get the Intel based Mac that's going to be a different story because the Android Studio is available and it is fully functional and supported by Intel but this M1 has a bit of challenge when it comes to setting up the flutter so that was my experience with M1 and on the plus side you get access to iOS simulator and you can develop and test Android and iOS applications at the same time. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.